Okay, so today we're going to talk about the logistic model. And with the using Desmos, we're actually going to explore some of the parameters of the logistic model. We're going to look at what the effect of L does. And logistic models have this kind of configuration. Okay, so let's look at L. Okay, so in Desmos, I've got L up top and I've got this fixed on the bottom. And the logistic model has this kind of uh, configuration where it's flat here pretty much, then it grows and it flattens out again. And this often is, uh, populations often have this when they hit their, their maximum value. So if I take this slider and move L back and forth, you can see that the curve moves up and down, the top part moves up and down with that L. If I put an asymptote on there, the L line up there, it is the upper asymptote, okay? And so if you think about populations, this is like the maximum a population could actually be. So maybe the planet Earth right now is right here, it hasn't hit its ultimate maximum carrying capacity. And so that's what L does. So L is telling us about the, right, the upper limit of the population size often called the carrying capacity. So it's the upper limit that that could be. Now, and if I think about transformations, if I think about what's happening as I move L back and forth, all these Y values are getting taller. And if I think about taking this particular function, one over one plus E to the negative X, if, I, if this is my function, if I multiply it by L, this is what this function actually is. And so L is a vertical stretch. All of, all of the uh, Y values are being multiplied by L and it's going to be just a vertical stretch. So in essence, it is a vertical stretch by a factor of L. In mathematics, you can see it because I multiplied the function by L. So what is happening to the rate of change of this graph? When does it seem biggest? Well, the rate of change of this graph is imagine if there is a tangent line at any given point here. So if I steal this graph here, and let's, and if I take a look here, so I know here is a tangent line. There's a tangent line here, tangent line here, and so on. And I'm looking, this tangent line is the rate of change of this graph. And so here's the rate of change. And you can see as it's getting closer to this carrying capacity, the rate of change is getting smaller, the slope is getting smaller. Initially, the slope is fairly small. It gets bigger up until somewhere right around here. And then it starts to get decreased, the rate of change decreases again. And so what is happening to the rate of change of this graph? Well, what's happening is it starts off small, and then halfway between the upper acetate and lower acetate, there's a point of reflection. And it starts at that point, it starts to get smaller again. So the rate of change gets bigger and then increases and then decreases. And finally, the last two things that asymptote, well, the first one is y is equal to zero. This is the lower asymptote down here, y equals zero. And the upper asymptote is y is equal to l. And so there's a little bit of a logistic function. If I look now at changing the, so the scenario, I'm going to fix L at 10, and I'm going to look at this B value. It always has to be 0. So if I go back to here, let me delete a bunch of these curves and see what I have to play with. I have this function here. And I know the carrying capacity is 10, and I want to see the effect of B. Well, as I change B, the steepness of that in middle part gets quite small. As it, B gets bigger, that steepness gets more and more defined. It's steeper and steeper and steeper, the higher B gets. It's quite low down here, and it starts to get steeper. So what is the relationship between the parameter B and the given function? Well, what that is, it is the rate of how it is growing. It is how controls how quickly the population grows. The bigger B is, the faster the population grows. What point is invariant? Well, invariant means it does not change. Okay, it does not change. It's the point that stays constant throughout. 
And if I change B, you'll notice the point that stays constant throughout is the y-intercept here. It's invariant. So the y-intercept is invariant. Well, how does this one link to transformations? Well, this one is a horizontal stretch by a factor 1 over b. Here, when I multiply, when I take 1 plus here over 10, if I'm going to do a, a horizontal stretch, I multiply by b, the x gets multiplied by b, by b, and so it's a horizontal stretch of 1 over b. But that's a horizontal stretch factor. And what has happened to the rate of change of the graph? Well, going back to the rate of change, it's all about these these tangent lines. You can see tangent lines are less steep, more steep, more steep, the most steep going through 5, and then they get less steep, less steep, less steep. So the slope increases to a point, and then the slope starts to decrease. But they're always positive slopes. So what has happened to the rate of change? Well, the rate of change starts off slowly, and then increases to a maximum. And then the rate of change decreases and approaches zero as x gets large. It is greatest at the halfway point, which is the point of inflection. So at this point here, 0, 05 in this case, that is where the slope of the tangent line is steepest. That is where the rate of change is the most. And this is called a point of inflection because I can see this graph is kind of curving upwards and this graph is kind of curving as a downward curve to the, even though it's increasing. And there is your introduction to the logistic function.